Model steam engines for beginners, part 40. Matching the steam engine to a suitable boiler is often overlooked and the results are frequently not very good. This video explains the steam to water ratio as well as the need to have a suitable heat source to make enough steam to run the engine continuously. On screen at the moment is a video clip from a few years ago and it features a Stuart 5A steam engine that I built. And here it is running quite well at a moderate speed. The problem is this is a large engine with a two and a quarter inch diameter piston and a stroke of around two inches. So it does use a lot of steam and the boiler that's connected to it is nowhere near as big as it should be. So what's the problem? It seems to be running okay. Well, yes, at this speed it does. If I increase the speed though, the water level in the water gauge on the boiler drops radically. And in no time at all, I have to use the hand pump to pump some more water in. What does this do? It drops the pressure and the engine gets slower and slower and will probably stop. The Stuart 5A is not strictly a model engine. It's a small, full-size engine. The specification being one and a half horsepower at 80 PSI. The boiler that I have it connected to is quite good. It's a copper boiler. And I'll show you a picture of it here. With the engine running at this speed, the pressure gauge on the boiler tells me that it's just under working pressure. The problem is though, and you can see it if you look closely, as the engine runs, the pressure is dropping. And I haven't done anything at the engine, the engine is also slowing down. And eventually it settles back to this speed, which is very pleasant to watch. But shortly after this clip was taken, I stopped the engine and then let the boiler raise some more steam. And here we go again. Nearly at working pressure, the engine's running fast again and everything's okay. But only for this application where the engine is sat on a bench, chugging away, not doing any work. As you can see, the water level has dropped considerably in the water gauge. I'm just blowing it down to get rid of an air bubble. And here is the main problem. The steam pressure, as shown on the pressure gauge, is quite low. And I need to fill the boiler with water, or at least pump some water in there. The engine is only able to run very slowly. I stopped the engine and refilled the boiler using the hand pump. And with the water level about halfway up the water gauge, the engine runs again and it's running OK, but not very fast. The heat source is not excessive, it's a gas burner being fed with butane gas from a camping gas cylinder. This gas cylinder is quite full so it's not chilling and the pressure's quite good. And the engine as you've just seen was running quite well, fairly fast, but now in no time at all it's slowed back down and if you look on the pressure gauge you'll see there's about 25 pounds per square inch showing on the gauge. Using a larger coal-fired Castle Steam V6 boiler fitted with a South of Steam powered water pump. Coal firing boilers is an entirely different experience as you're about to see. To light this boiler I've decided to use charcoal soaked in white spirit. And the white spirit that I used was some that I'd been cleaning paintbrushes in. Hence the red bits you can see in the charcoal. If you are using charcoal soaked in white spirit or paraffin make sure that you don't throw a lot of paraffin into the firebox with the charcoal. Here's a health and safety warning, under no circumstances must you use petrol or anything like that. I lit the final shovel full of charcoal before putting it in the firebox, and this lights the rest of the charcoal in there. The only problem is, it's actually a breezy day today, there's not a gale blowing which makes a change, but the wind across the top of the chimney makes the chimney not draw as well as it should do. Eventually though it settles down and I found that if I nearly shut the fire hole door like this it was acceptable. While I was waiting for the steam to show up on the pressure gauge I thought it was a good idea to fill the boiler almost to the top using the hand pump. In the end I filled it three quarters full, that should be fine. Now I can shut the fire hole door a little further. Once the charcoal is well alight, there's less danger of the fire going out if I shut the fire hole door. And of course now, the drafting is coming from underneath the fire, 
and this in turn will make the fire burn much more brightly. I haven't put any coal on yet, I'm waiting until the charcoal is fully lit. And this is the time that you need to attend to the lubrication. I'm filling the mechanical lubricator on the pump, for this I'm using steam oil, and I'm also just applying a little bit of steam oil to all the moving parts. Now is the exciting part, well calm down it's not that exciting, I'm adding some coal into the fire box on top of the charcoal via the fire hole door. The design of this boiler is really good. For instance, the firebox crown is quite a long way above the top of the firehole door. And as well as some other internal innovative designs, this boiler allows for a really good depth of fire. And once this coal is all alight, then the steam will be raised very quickly. Nothing shown on the gauge yet, but very soon things will start to happen. It's always a good idea with a miniature steam boiler to initially raise the steam slowly. That's because all of the metal that's in the boiler expands quite slowly, not all at once. As soon as some pressure showed on the pressure gauge, I opened the blower, which blows a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. Now I'm closing it to almost close because I don't want that much blast. And no, this is not speeded up. This is the speed of steam generation with a Castle Steam V6 boiler. Time to open the steam valve to the pump. And here it is, sizzling nicely and pumping water into the boiler. The pump works OK, I think it's time to attach a steam engine. The steam engine is a Stuart 5A that I worked on a while back. It wasn't in particularly good condition. I fitted reversing gear to it, a mechanical lubricator and a crosshead oiler. As you can see and hear, the engine is running very smoothly. I've run this 5A many times on steam and it runs OK. If you look behind it at the water gauge you'll see that the level is dropping, so it's time to just switch on the pump and put some more water in there. By switch on I mean open the steam valve. This is not an electric pump. This steam pump is actually too big for this boiler, it's putting too much water in too quickly. And I overfilled it, I always do that. The noise that you can hear is from the steam blower that blows a jet of steam up the chimney, but now it's blowing a jet of water up the chimney. I opened the bypass valve so most of the water is being returned to the tank. With a steam pump of this type you do not need to fit a water bypass valve, but it's good to have one so you can run the pump to watch it working without filling the boiler. With the bypass valve open, all that happens is the pump takes the water from the tank and then it's pumped back to the tank, not into the boiler. I've opened the valve on the boiler to speed up the engine to clear the water excess. This clip shows just how good this boiler is. Its working pressure is 100 pounds per square inch, it's blowing off, the engine's really running fast. These four-way chime whistles are quite big and they use a lot of steam. And as you can see, the pressure is held at 100 pounds per square inch all the time. And it's starting to blow off again. This would be a good plant for a small or medium sized boat, 20 to 25 feet in length. A quick look at the fire tells me that the fire is in excellent order. It's worth mentioning that the exhaust from the engine is not going up the chimney. If that was the case, this fire would be white hot. In this clip I've dropped the pressure, I've pumped in quite a lot of water, I haven't got the blower on and the fire is settling down. And there's still plenty of power coming from the 5A. By increasing the speed of the pump, more water's also been pumped into the boiler. So there you have it. There's a relationship between the physical size of the boiler, the amount of heat you can get in the firebox and the amount of water relative to the size of the engine. Get all four of these things right and you can have constant running at good power levels. Really though, a 6 inch diameter boiler of this height is a little bit small for a 5A. The larger the boiler, the more water it holds. And generally, if it's a coal fired boiler, the heat is intense. Gas fired boilers are okay, they're very convenient. A propane fired boiler would be quite good. 
but I really don't like the idea of having a high explosive tank next to a boiler in a small confined space. It's not just that though, the smell of coal and oil in a steam plant is really good. The bigger the engine, the bigger the boiler needs to be for successful running. And that's it, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.